an all new edge to edge display, five cameras, in display fingerprint reader, and next generation wireless charging. These four features define the highly anticipated Samsung Galaxy S10, and we're here to break it down for you. Hi, I'm Michael Josh. You're watching Gadget Match. This is it. This is our Samsung Galaxy S10 hands on. When Samsung launched the original Galaxy S in 2010, it was just one of many Android phones at that time. And now in 2019, almost a decade later, Samsung smartphones are now a household name and the number one shipped smartphone brand in the world. To get there, Samsung has really had to push the boundaries of what's possible in the world of tech. And over many, many years, we have covered them and seen them introduce new and innovative features via their popular Galaxy S line. Having said that, the S10 may not be a phone with one or two standout features, but it is one with a refinement of everything else we've seen from other smartphones launch over the last few months. First things first, the S10 comes in three variants. The S10e, S10, and S10 Plus. All share an all new design Samsung likes to call the Infinity O display. A much larger 19 by nine screen with a slimmer, lighter profile. It's called Infinity O display because of, well, you guessed it, the O shaped front facing camera over here. On the S10 Plus, it's a different shape because of its dual front cameras. The S10e is the smallest and most affordable of the bunch. It looks a bit different from the usual Samsung flagship. It doesn't have a curved display. Instead, you get rounded corners and flat, but symmetrical bezels all around. At the back, you only get two cameras, and on the right-hand side, the power button also doubles as a fingerprint sensor. Apart from that, button and port placements across all phones are the same. Power button on the regular S10 and S10 Plus are also on the right side. On the left, volume rocker and Bixby button, which is still unassignable. Headphone jack, USB-C port, and speaker grills are on the bottom. Up top, a microphone and a hybrid nano SIM card tray. The earpiece is also found up here. The S10 and S10 Plus share a squarish body similar to the Note series with Samsung's signature curved displays. For the first time on a Samsung phone, there's an in-display fingerprint reader. And also for the first time on its high-end models, more than two rear cameras. Three of them to be exact, which means the Plus model has a total of five cameras. Here's all three phones camera setup looks like side by side. Back in the day when dual cameras became a thing, you usually had to choose between zoom lens or wide angle lens. And while you know I am a zoom kind of guy, I don't mind an ultra wide angle lens to take photos like this. All three variants retain last year's dual aperture feature, where the regular wide angle lens adjusts between two apertures to let in more light or better background blur as needed. Samsung says its intelligent scene recognition feature is even better than before. You know, that feature that detects what your subject is and adjusts settings accordingly. We tried it and it works on all three camera modes. But, and I've said this before, we would have loved to see the option of turning it off after taking the shot. Samsung also has a new feature called Composition Guide, which can help users frame their photos better. A yellow line appears when you're composing like so, and it tells you where to point your camera and takes the photo automatically for you. It's honestly not the most intuitive feature out there, and it's kind of unnecessary. You're better off turning on the grid when trying to perfect a horizon shot, for example. The two selfie cameras on the Plus model mean you get live focus up front so that you can take selfies with that creamy background blur. And group selfies with ease. If you're not feeling yourself, worry not. We're happy to report that AR emoji also has improved 
a little. Face tracking is still not perfect, but if you stick your tongue out, so will your AR emoji. And the faces are now more cartoony instead of an odd version of your face. There's also now an option to superimpose your AR emoji over your body, which can make for fun dance videos, maybe. If video is your priority, there's now an option to record in Ultra HD at 60 frames per second. The Galaxy S10 runs Android Pie out of the box, which means it comes built in with Samsung's new One UI. Some of you might have already gotten the One UI update, but for those of you who haven't, here are three of the biggest changes you can expect. There's focus blocks, which segments similar items in the interface into blocks like so. This makes it easier to find the setting you're looking for. Segregated viewing and interaction areas bring down half of the menu, so it's easier for your thumb to reach the topmost area in one-handed use scenarios. And last but not the least, I know you'll like this one, there is night mode that turns the whole UI dark. And as the name suggests, this is especially useful at night so your screen isn't too bright for your eyes in the dark. Samsung makes the best smartphone display in the industry, hands down. And while the S9 and Note 9 have already good ones, on the S10, they're taking it up a notch. Dynamic AMOLED makes viewing better even in really bright lighting conditions. It's also got better dynamic range. So even if you're watching a movie with a dark scene, for example, you get a wider range of colors. The S10's display is also smart enough to adjust settings based on your surroundings. It automatically activates a 41% blue light filter when necessary, even before you turn it on manually. In 2019, under-display fingerprint scanners aren't new. In fact, we've already seen it on some lower mid-range smartphones late last year. Now, while late to the party, Samsung's implementation is different and better. Unlike other brands that use optical scanners, which makes use of light and a tiny camera to analyze your fingerprint, the S10 comes with an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner, which is faster and much more accurate. See here. The display doesn't even need to be turned on for it to work. It doesn't even require an illuminated image of a fingerprint here on the always-on display for it to work. You just tap your registered finger here and it unlocks just like that. This is by far the fastest under-display fingerprint scanner we've seen on a smartphone to date. Do note that Face Unlock still works faster if you have both options activated. Unlike previous models, none of the S10 variants have an iris scanner, so while Face Unlock is indeed faster, it is also now less secure than before. Depending on where you are in the world, the S10 will run on either an Exynos or a Qualcomm 8 nanometer chip, so you can expect the best performance. The Galaxy S10e comes in a 6 plus 128 gigabyte configuration, while the S10 and S10 Plus come with bigger memory, although this may still vary per region. There's also going to be a Plus model with 12 gigabytes of memory and, wait for it, one terabyte of storage. I don't know if you need that much, but think of it this way. That's more RAM and storage than on an average person's laptop. Despite its slimmer profile, the S10 models also get an upgrade in the battery department, with the Plus model sporting a whopping 4100 milliamp hour battery. Samsung also promises better power management with the Galaxy S10. By turning on certain settings, the phone can automatically optimize power usage based on the apps you're using. All three S10 models support what Samsung calls wireless power share, which charges any device that supports wireless Qi charging. That includes other phones or even your wearables. I know what you're thinking. We've seen this before on the Huawei Mate 20 Pro, but hey, 
we're not complaining. It's a feature that's actually useful in emergency situations or when you're traveling and say you only brought one charger. Of course, Samsung has an updated array of accessories compatible with the S10, a new dual wireless charging pad. There's also a wireless charging power bank so you don't need to bring a cable with you all the time. But our favorite is this new LED back cover that shows icons like this. Or if it's your cup of tea, a galaxy of stars. You can even use it as a timer when taking photos on your own. So is the new Samsung Galaxy S10 your gadget match? As always, I'm going to ask you to have to wait till our review video. But for now, what I can tell you is this. When you take its features apart like this, it makes it seem like what we have is yet another underwhelming phone with no new groundbreaking feature. But to look at the S10 that way does the phone an injustice. It's one that needs to be taken as a whole, not the sum of its parts. Just like the last few generations of flagship Galaxy devices, what Samsung created is a solid, reliable smartphone that has everything you could ever want in a phone from 2019. And to evaluate the Galaxy S10 based on a bullet list of features is not enough for anyone to see if it's his or her gadget match. We'd love to be able to put these phones through their paces and let you know our thoughts once we're done with our review. So to make sure you don't miss any of that, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we post a new video. Follow us on social media for all the fun stuff. And as always, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.